Hey everyone, I wanted to share another thing about AI with you uh, for the deeper Bible study. And I found this really interesting uh, about something that you can use this as a powerful tool. I'm also going to share one that I paid for that. I don't know if it'll stay around for a long time, but I'll explain that in more detail in just a minute. But I also like using it as well because it uses different data to get AI from. But again, just want to give you a warning. Anytime you're using this AI software, you have to realize that it can make mistakes and it's pulling from a whole pool of information from different things. And if you ask it for certain things, it'll give it to you. But I thought it was really interesting to put this thing to the test to look at the Greek grammar of a particular text. Now, I'm by no means a Greek expert whatsoever. Don't claim to be. Uh, now, I've learned it in two different ways. I've learned to pronounce it the way they normally teach it here in the United States. And then I learned it from someone else that taught me how to pronounce it the way they do in Greece, because that's what they do there. They basically look at the language, but whenever they pronounce it, they pronounce it like their common language, which would make sense. And so whenever you hear me try to pronounce some of these Greek words, I'll probably butcher it up. Um, and uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like to be able to see some of the I have several Greek uh, friends that are Greek scholars that actually teach Greek. Um, and I don't know if they'd consider themselves scholars, but uh, they're, they've got their degree in Greek and they know it very well. I'd like to see how what they think about how it describes it. But this will be another great tool for you to dive in deeper. This won't be for everyone because, like I said, it's really going to get into the Greek and it's going to break down each word and look at them. But what I'm really interested in is one that I'm familiar with. And that's going to be Acts 2 and verse 38. And we'll see what it says. Will it really butcher it up? Will it cause it to make it out like what a lot of people will say and say that the word um, ace means to mean that it means because of instead of uh, for the remission of sins? Well, we'll get right into that and we'll see. I'm going to minimize my picture and we'll get right into the program. Okay, the first one I want to look at is Bard. My remember, I told you that I'm using uh, the three free ones. This ChatGPT, that's the most well-known. Bing is probably the second most well-known. That's using Microsoft. Microsoft, And they're going to be using a thing that's called Copilot. They'll integrate into Microsoft Word and all that stuff here very soon. And, um, and then I'm using... Um, What's the other one I'm using? Uh, well, <laughs> well, the one I'm on right now, Bard. I don't know. I got lost in that. Let's staring me around the face. But anyway, the Bard is Google's version of this. Now, I had to ask Bard a very specific question. When I just, I had originally posted the actual Greek from a program I have from Acts 238 and asked to explain it, and it said it couldn't do it. So then I rephrased the question as you see it on the screen here. It says, explain the Greek grammar word by word from Acts 2.38. And so this is what it did. You can see the Greek phrase here on your screen. And it tells us what that means in English. It says, but Peter said to them, and it tells you the grammar, conjunction, article, pronoun, preposition, and so forth. Repent. Again, it shows us imperative, second person plural. So imperative is a command. And um, then it says, he says, and it says, breaks it all down into the gra grammar of everything. So it shows you all these different things. And of course, it's, an, it's a conjunction. Be baptized. Notice this is another imperative. Second person, singular. And then uh, it says, each of you, pronoun, preposition, so forth. And again, it gives you, continues to break this down. Again, you can try this on your own and you can see how this would really help you especially if you didn't have any software to use that uh, does it for you. Of course, I've given you a, a study tool that will show you this um, using uh, uh, several different free online programs like studylight.org and Blue Letter Bible. Um, you can look at that video, look at that information. But anyway, this breaks it down for you. What I like about BARD is that it does incorporate itself into the program of Google. So you could export this that it gave you into uh, its sheets which is kind of like an Excel file, and you could use that in any way you wanted to. Here's what it says down here on the explanation note. It says, but uh, Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Here's the explanation. The Greek grammar of Acts 2.38 is relatively simple. The main verb is bat, uh, baptizatho, 
uh, which is basically the word is baptism, which is an imperative verb meaning be baptized. The verb is in the second person singular form, so it is addressed to the individual listener. The preposition uh, epi means in or or upon and is followed by the noun uh, to omote. Like I said, I'm going to boss these up. I'm not good at pronouncing these words, which means name. The noun um, anoma is in the dative case, which means that it is received the action of the verb. In the case, the action of the verb is being baptized. The noun is a proper noun, which means that it is in the name of a specific person. In this case, the person is Jesus Christ. And then, in fact, I'm just going to not even pronounce these words. You can just fill them in yourself. The noun means gift, and it is the in the accusative case. The accusative case is used for the direct object of the verb. In this case, the direct object of the verb is the noun. And then the adjective means holy, and it is in the genitive case. The genitive case is used to show possession or relationship. In this case, the noun pneumatos, uh, however you say that, I don't know, it is the uh, genitive case because it is possessed by the adjective and the noun uh, means spirit. Of course, we're talking about the Holy Spirit. The overall meaning of the verse is that Peter is telling people to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. If they do this, they receive the gift of uh, the Holy, Holy Spirit. All right. And so that kind of gives you a really breakdown. Like I said, just getting really into the grammar. This is not for everybody. Um, I mean, everybody can look at this and really learn more about what a verse is saying by looking at the grammar. But anyway, now what I want to do is I want to move over to Bing. We're looking at the same information. Again, this is going to be kind of tedious. And you'll just have to bear with me as I do this. Or you don't have to. You can always just fast forward or whatever you want to do. Or you can leave off the video. And so you can see here how I asked Bing the question again. I pasted it in the Greek uh, in Acts 2.38. Like I said, Google wouldn't do that. But uh, Bing did. And remember, Bing is using ChatGPT 4.0 um, in this particular format. Uh, as you explain it, so this verse is part of Peter's speech to the crowd of the day of Pentecost that the Holy Spirit had descended on the apostles and enabled them to speak in different languages. Peter has called the people to repent of their sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ so they may receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So to understand the Greek grammar of this verse, we need to look at the structure and meaning of each word and phrase. And here is a breakdown of the verse with some explanation references. And so now it's going to go through and it's going to give its explanation for each of these words. And of course, for Peter, so this is nominative, singular noun, Peter, followed by a post-positive conjunction, but the nominative case indicates that Peter is the subject of the main verb. The conjunction connects the sentence with the previous one where Peter is answering the question of the crowd, what does this mean? Then uh, this next Greek word, and you can see it kind of gives you like the English pronunciation of this, how you pronounce it in English is pros or aut uh, autos. Or pros autos. This is, this is a preposition to towards followed by an accusative plural pronoun, them. The accusative case indicates that the this pronoun is the object of the preposition. The preposition shows the directional relationship of Peter's speech to the crowd. He is speaking to them, addressing them. And so see how this is really giving us deeper information about what these words are indicating from the grammar. And so it allows you to dig in deeper. Um, and then our next word is so this is the aorist active imperative verb repent. The aorist tense indicates a completed action in the past or simply an action without reference to time. The active voice indicates that the subject you performs action. The imperative mood indicates a command or exhortation. So Peter is urging the people to change their mind and to return away from their sins. And so that's what repent is. You know, you're changing uh, your way to God's way, basically. You're repenting of whatever sin you have. Okay, um, and then you can read some of this on your own. I don't want to look at every single word. I'll be on here for a long time. Got the coordinated conjunction there. Okay, now we get down to, to baptism. Because again, it says, this is an aorist pa passive imperative verb, be baptized. The aorist tense indicates a completed action in the past or simple action without reference to time. Again, seeing the exact same thing we did with the word repent. 
The passive voice indicates that the subject you receives or undergoes the action. The imperative mood indicates a command or exhortation. Peter is instructing the people to be immersed in water as a sign of their repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to stop right there. That is that particular phrasing right there. That comes from some denominational terminology. But we're going to see here in a minute. Like I said, whenever you're asking AI these things, it's going to give you whatever answers it gets from outside of this. And the reason I say that's um, coming from a denominational influence is because that particular phrasing there is leading to the idea that you can be baptized uh, because of the forgiveness of sins. But we'll see in just a minute that as we continue to ask more questions to the AI, that it's going to obliterate that whole idea. Okay, uh, let's see. <laughs> Now, this next word again, it says, you know, this, uh, the word each, every, this is nominative case. And basically it emphasizes that Peter's command applies to every individual person in the crowd. And so this applies to everyone. This, the, he was speaking, uh, or they were speaking, talking about how he had to repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. It applies to everyone there and applies to everyone of us as well today. All right. Um, Let's see, what else do I want to point out here? Again, you can read some of these on your own. You push pause. You should be able to see them good enough on your screen. Um, and then we got uh, epi here. This is preposition on upon. The dative case in the case of the honor pronoun following preposition is an indirect object. Or disadvantage. Okay, the preposition shows the location relation of baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. There are different interpretations of what the preposition means in this context. Some scholars argue that it means in or into, indicating the people are baptized into a new relationship with Jesus Christ or into his authority and lordship. Others suggest that it means on or upon, indicating the people are baptized on the basis of or response to the name of Christ and his commands and promise. All right. So you can see that the, it gives that there's two possible meanings here that some people say what that means. All right. Uh, let's see. Okay, you're gonna keep on going down here. Now we're gonna go down to ace. This is a preposition for into unto, followed by an accusative case. The accusative case indicates the noun or pronoun following the preposition is the direct object or the object of the purpose of the result. The preposition shows the direction or relation of the baptism to the forgiveness of sins. Again, there are different interpretations for what this preposition means in this context. Some scholars argue that it means for or unto, indicating that baptism is necessary for obtaining or receiving the forgiveness of sins. And so even if we're just looking at this as looking at some or this thing trying to give its unbiased um, view of this, it at least lets us know uh, just from what we've been given. If we didn't know any anything different, we know that it's certainly a possibility that Acts 2.38 is talking about repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of sins, okay? But it also says, others suggest it means because of or with reference to, indicating that baptism is a sign or a symbol of forgiveness of sin that has already been granted by God's grace through faith in Christ Jesus. And so that's the faith only view right there. You know, they would say, well, no, you know, you're baptized. Yeah, because Jesus is baptized. And some people even say you don't have to be baptized. Others say, well, you should do it because, you know, Jesus did it. And, you know, it's a sign showing that you're already saved. All right. So that's what some would say. And so that's why you keep seeing this show up, because that is predominantly what is taught throughout nearly all the denominations. There's very few that teach the other way. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's go down here. Um, that's all that says on there. All right. And before I go any further on that one, I want to go over, back over to chat GTP. Actually, let me go to my, I'm going to tell you about this program that I, that I bought. It was a one-time fee. I don't know if it'll stay around. A lot of people don't even know about it. It's called quickwrite.ai. I was able to buy it, uh, at, uh, uh, early on in the stage and I mean when it was beginning I just bought it about a month ago the prices went up on it and you can still buy a one-time pay a one-time fee to get it 
um, but it also has a monthly subscription to it. And the only reason I got it is because I'm uh, hoping that it's going to continue to stay valid. Because at any time, really, for these people that are working on this AI program here, on this um, quick write, if uh, they're not able to make money at it, if they're, something's happening where they just don't want to mess with it anymore, because right now it's a big competition in the AI field, you know, they could just, next month, they could say, okay, we're not doing it anymore. And then I would lose my, my one-time payment. Um, but... I really like this particular program because it does. It uses a different database. It's using different things. I don't know exactly what it's using, but it puts out different things. Now, I use the thing is called Power Editor. I'm just going to show this to you really quick. I don't waste a lot of time on this, but you can. It has things where you can um, uh, write, do it for fiction writing, nonfiction writing, blog writing, as a humanizer, uh, as a translator, and they're continuing adding different languages and stuff. Um, they even have an AI, uh, an image creator, and it's kind of basic. Last time I looked at it, I haven't played with that much anymore, but I love the power editor because it basically just makes it an open prompt where you can put pretty much anything you want in there. And I like the results that it gives. Whenever you punch it in and you just say generate code, as you can see this big button here, it'll put it over here in this middle screen. And then if you like what that puts out, you can say move it to the content editor editor. And it moves it over here to the right and you can save the document and it'll save it online it's there for you or you can export it to, to microsoft word i just want to show you real quickly and i'm not going to read all these you can see this on the screen and you can pause and look at what it said on here but i said the same question i said explain the greek grammar of man oh that, this is that was a lighter question that you see on the screen there my first question was to ask it to explain the grammar of acts 238 and you can see that it does that um, again, breaks it down, you know, this first phrase here, Peter, or but Peter said to them, uh, it says, in this phrase, the noun Peter is in the nominative case, indicating it is a subject of the sentence, blah, 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 and it tells you all that stuff, and then it goes through here, and I'm going to slowly scroll through here in case you want to read that. Now, this program does not, by the way, doesn't have a trial program, it's just one that you have to buy, and then if you're not happy with it, they will give you a return in 30 days, but anyway, um, I really, really like this program. I hope it continues on, and it's going to be a really good deal. Uh, it's a lifetime deal when you pay the one-time purchase if it continues on. So I hope that it continues to succeed. All right. Um, let's see where I'm going to look at right here. All right. For the forgiveness of your sins. That's the part. For prepossession. Ace four is followed by the accusative case indicating the purpose or goal of the action. The noun forgiveness is in the accusative case indicating the direct object of the action. The pronoun of you is in the genitive case indicating possession. The genitive construction specifies the nature of what is being forgiven. And so basically it's just giving you the information. It's not trying to tell you that by telling you about some possibilities to change it this way or that way. It's just telling you what it says about that. Let's see what else it says here. Down in the summary, it says, in the Greek grammar down here, it says, in Acts 238, demonstrates various cases, tenses, voices, constructions that convey specific meaning and nuances. Understanding these grammatical elements is crucial to accurately interpreting and translating the verse in its original context. All right. Now, I want to go back over to ChatGTP. I know this is a bunch of different ones. This is our free one. ChatGTP. Let me find it. There it is. Okay. And Acts 2, in verse 38, is written in the Greek. And again, tells you understanding the Greek is important, and it breaks this down. Again, it has the phrases, as you can see on the screen. But Peter said to them, repent. Kind of breaks all that down for you. This is all good also if you're trying to learn the Greek and trying to get those words associated with different phrases and see how they work together. Now, I said, let's address the possible interpretations or grammatical nuances of the verse based on the provided preferences now here's what i want you to notice and this is not even like i said this is the chat gtp 3.5 i think it's what they still call it it's the free version but notice as it's referencing it says according to daniel b wallace grammar there are eight uses of the greek word ace with the accusative case including purpose result advantage the verse in question acts 238 includes includes the phrase ace I'm not going to read that phrase, but it um, anyway it has that phrase in there, which is often translated as for the forgiveness of your sins. The use of ace here has been subject, a subject of discussion and interpretation. 
One interpretation suggests that ace should be translated as because of or with reference to rather than for the interpretation or for. This interpretation implies that baptism is not a prerequisite for the forgiveness of sins, but rather a symbolic act that signifies repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. Another interpretation suggests that ace should be translated as unto or toward. This view emphasizes the direction or goal of baptism as a means of receiving forgiveness, entering into a relationship <clears throat> with Jesus Christ. Excuse me. It's important to note that Greek grammar alone cannot determine the theology or theological implications of a verse. Interpretations may vary. Listen to this. Very true here. Very, interpretations may vary based on theological perspectives and the broader context of the biblical narrative. It is advisable to consider different translations and consult commentaries for comprehensive understanding of Acts 2 and uh, verse number 38. And so once again, we can see that not only this time it names someone that's actually giving this particular grammar or this instance of this. And I believe uh, I didn't I need to have to confirm this completely, but I think this is the same guy that Wayne Jackson talks about over here on his page on ChristianCourier.com. And yep, I believe it's the same one, Wallace. At uh, you'll see the title of this actually of his thing. It says Dallas professor rebukes common quibbles on ice. It says in uh, in a new volume of Greek grammar, Doctor Daniel Wallace of the Dallas Theological Seminar has made monumental concession with devast which devastates a common denomination or last realization relative uh, to the meaning of ace in Acts two on verse thirty eight. So basically, he goes through here to say that, you know, originally, and this was back in 1996, he was trying to say that there is uh, a way to make Acts 238 be because of. Well, finally, as Wayne Jackson noted down here, uh, he basically, when you come down to the end of this article and you can read this on your own, just look it up. Um, look up Ace. The way I found it on Wayne Jackson's website or the Christian Corey website is I just put in EIS. And it brings up like three different articles on it. And this one here, it says, uh, let's see. In his discussion of Ace, Wallace lists several uses of the preposition, among them casual and conspicuously missing. It's conspicuously missing. I can't even say that word. <laughs> Professor Wallace explains the absence. He says that an interesting discussion over the force of ACE took place several years ago, especially in relationship to Acts 238. And then it says, you know, he referenced uh, some of these other positions, some other people held. And then it says down here, it says, when the smoke had cleared, the Dallas professor conceded, Marcus Ibley demonstrated that the linguistic evidence for casual ACE fell short of proof. That is not that Professor Wallace has come to the conviction that baptism is central for salvation, no, he resorts to other manipulations to resist the conclusion. He, how, he has, however, rebuffed a long defended argument that ace means because of. And so here we can see the, the very thing that ChatGTP referenced and used as an example of saying, well, this particular guy over here, this Greek grammar guy, said that, you know, this ace could be because of. Well, that's old information. It has now been, re he's rebuffed that. And he said, no, I take it back. You know, that's that's not proof enough. But what I thought was key is whenever ChatGTP said that, you know, sometimes, you know, theology can outweigh, you know, what the grammar says of the verse. It shouldn't, but that's what happens. And Wayne Jackson in another one of his articles, when I looked up Ace, um, and I actually have this in my baptism book, this quote in my, in my baptism book as well. He said this, it says in Matthew, um, we're going to be talking about Matthew 26, 28, because uh, I'll just go ahead and tell you, it has the exact same grammar as Acts 2, 38, when it talks about uh, for the forgiveness of sins. And you can, you, and whenever we look at it, you'll see it obliterates this whole view because uh, of Acts 2, 38, saying because of, because no one will say that it means because of at Mac. Matthew 26, verse 28. Not to mention the fact, well, I'm, we'll get to that in just a minute, but look at what A.T. Robertson says. Even the renowned Baptist scholar A.T. Robertson, who attempts to twist Acts 2.38 into conformity with his personal theological agenda, was forced to surrender his position when discussing Matthew 26, 28. Of the controversial phrase, he stated, the purpose of shedding of his blood of the New Covenant was precisely to remove the sins. And it says... 
in his massive historical grammar, Robertson suggested that sometimes grammar has to give way to theology. And that, uh, is that any way to treat the verbally inspired word of God? Yeah, that is how Robertson sought to dispose of Acts 238 for shame. So in other words, Robertson, he knows what the grammar means in Acts 238. And I mean, he'll be to look up just about anything else he says in the New Testament, as long as it doesn't go against his theology. And I mean, it's a good source. It's a good resource. You can look at what he says about different grammar words and things like that. But when it comes to Acts 238, because baptism for the forgiveness of sins doesn't fit his theology, again, he wants to try to change it and ignore what it, what it says, but still apply the same grammar correctly when it comes to Jesus, you know, that he died for the forgiveness uh, of sins and not because of, and uh, nobody would uh, ever, ever come to that conclusion. All right. So I wanted to point that out. Now let's go back to, I think it was, I want to go to chat GTP. Let's see if that's where I was wanting to go. Cause I was going to show you what I asked it next. I got to skip past all this junk where I did the web search. Uh, oh, I asked, let me see if I can find my question. It's kind of hard to find in the way that this chat GPD does this. It, I asked it is, I said, can you give, can you give any examples where the Greek word ace or ice, however you want to pronounce it means because, or it means because in, in the Koine Greek. And so Koine Greek, you know, that specific Greek is specific to the first century. And, you know, I mean, it's got a little bit of cushion on the side, but it only goes so far. Well, what I found in the past is those who tried to translate it because of is they're going over to the classic Greek, which was, you know, it's came after, uh, the, the Koine Greek. And you can't use, you can't use that. I, there's a reason why the language is dead. The Greek language is dead. It allows us to be able to examine the texts that are found within that time period. And we can learn a lot about the, the language and how it was used during that time period to be able to understand how it was used in the New Testament time. And so that makes a very, very powerful argument of why it can't be because of. And so I asked that question. You know, are there any examples? And this is what it said. Again, using chat GTP. It says the Greek word ace has various meanings depending on the context in which it's used. While it's primarily translated into, to, toward, or among, there are instances where it can be understood as because in the Koine Greek. In Koine Greek, the usage of ace as because is not a common, not as common as it is in other meanings. However, it's worth noting that the preposition, any language can have a nuanced and contextual translation. The primary meaning of ace is related to entrance, direction, purpose, or result. The specific translation of because is determined by the overall context and the interplay with other words and sentences. To explore examples where ace could be understood as because in the Koine Greek, it would be necessary to examine specific passages and context. While such examples may exist, they are likely to be limited. It's important to consider the broader range of meaning for ace and its contextual uh, usage in each uh, specific instance. It's worth noting that different Greek scholars and translations may interpret the usage of ace slightly different based on the context and their understanding of the passage. Therefore, it's always beneficial to consult multiple sources such as Greek lexicons, commentaries, and so on. Um, and so basically, let's see what my next question was. Oh yeah. So basically, it, uh, whenever I'm asking that question directly related to Acts 2 verse 38, and we're trying to ask it if it can find anything like that. Notice it didn't give me a single example. Didn't give a single example. Didn't give a ex single external example. And so it wasn't there. It just said, basically, it's, it's pulling on that idea that some have shown, and I already showed you that one guy that they, re they referenced a while ago, has already admitted that that's not the case. And even here, it's admitting that, well, it, yeah, it could. And if it did, it was rare. And so there'd have to be something very significant in the text to indicate that he was going to be used that way. Um, but there have been people that looked at the New Testament and there are a few places where like one or two or three places where they could see maybe where you could, you could put the word because and it might make it make sense. But it's been thoroughly explained that that simply is not how it's translated. Um, and so again, let's dig a little bit deeper. Let's see. I can't remember if I asked Bard the same question. Let's see if I did. Nope, I didn't ask it. 
me see if I asked. Bing. Yes, yes, here we go. I said the same thing. Is there any examples of ice from the Greek being translated as because of in the Bible or outside of the Bible in Koine, Koine Greek? And it says, thank you for the question. Thank you for being so polite, Bing. I have searched the web for some information and um, for the meaning of Greek preposition ace in coin a Greek, especially in Acts 238, here's what I found. The Greek word ace means for, in order to, or into. Acts 238 commands that we be baptized for the forgiveness of sins. Ace indicates the direction or relation of baptism to the forgiveness of sins. Notice this, ace does not mean because, because it always it is always forward looking as indicated by the terms to and to for so that in no reputable English version does the retrospect uh, respective because or does the retrospective because every trans uh, oh okay that's making it word weird because of the word because okay I mean let me just start over in no reputable English version does the retrospect because ever translate the Greek ace so it's never translated that way. And then it says, Ace may be rendered simply to, toward, or into, depending on the context and the case the noun, pronoun following it. Ace may also show the purpose or result of an action, such as repentance or baptism. Now, here we're going to, it's going to throw in, it's going to uh, throw an extra thing in your force. It says, there are different interpretations of what Ace means in Acts 238, especially in relation to the preposition epi on and the noun uh, that means name. Some scholars argue that ace means for or unto, indicating that baptism is necessary for attaining or receiving the forgiveness of sins. Others suggest that ace means because of or with reference to, indicating that baptism is a sign, a symbol of the forgiveness of sins that has already been granted by God's grace. And so, so we can, they threw that in there for them one more time, but notice what I asked. I said, if ace does not mean because in coin, coin a Greek, how can someone argue that it does? Remember, I set up there very specifically that it doesn't mean that. And it said, thank you for your question. I have searched the web for some information about the meaning of the Greek preposition ace in Koine Greek. Based on Acts 238, here's what I found. It says it means for, and it's sort of kind of repeating this over. Um, it says ace does not mean because, because it's always forward looking. Again, it says that over again. Um, and then where it talks about this different interpretations, it says that uh, others suggest that ace means because of or reference to indicating the baptism is sign or symbol of forgiveness of sins has already been granted. Um, but it says down here, it says some people argue that ace can mean because of in some context based on their theological views or their understanding of the passage. They may cite examples from outside the Bible where ace is used with a retrospective sense, such as he was crowned king because of his bravery, blah, blah, blah. However, these examples are not conclusive as they may depend on other factors such as word order, verb tense, or context clues. Moreover, they do not necessarily apply to Acts 238 where ace is followed by accusative noun and denotes a goal or result. Um, so in such cases, ace usually expresses a forward-looking purpose or intent. Therefore, it is more reasonable and consistent to translate ace for or in order to in Acts 2 and verse 38. I mean, you can't get very, you can't get any clearer than that. And so even though there's a lot of denom denomination of people that want to say that baptism is not for the forgiveness of sins, even though that's what the text says, we can see that the grammar does not help them at all. And we're just looking at one verse. I mean, you could, we could look at it so many more verses that talk about baptism that shows that it's necessary and it's something that we're supposed to submit ourselves to in order to be put into Christ and to be forgiven. But this by itself would be enough to show that Acts 238 is definitely saying that we are to repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of our sins. Now here's another great way to do this and that is uh, just looking at the grammar of Matthew 26, 28. Now we already read a little bit about that a while ago, but this is a parallel passage in sorts in that the grammar is exactly the same in that area about the forgiveness of sins. And so we're going to see, and I ask the same question, uh, and Bing gives us the same thing, um, a little bit more information. This is account of the Last Supper, where Jesus is to the Lord's Supper, blah, blah, blah. And you'll notice it's going to break down all of these different Greek words. 
and I'm going to scroll them kind of slow. So if you want to pause and read them, you can. But I'm going to get down here to the part where it says ace. Remember, this is the word that um, it's in Acts 238 that they want to make because it says this is a preposition four and two followed by uh, accusative case. The accusative case indicates that the noun or pronoun following the preposition is a direct object purpose result. The preposition shows the direction or relation of the action to the goal or outcome. And so, again, it's not, you notice it doesn't bring up any other possibilities here of what's going on. It tells us exactly um, what that, uh, what these ver or words mean. It's not saying there's another alternative to this because no one's going to say that, you know, Jesus died because of the forgiveness of sins. All right. So I asked the question to, for it to elaborate just a little bit more. I said, in this verse, can ace mean because? And it says, I have searched the web, blah, blah, blah. So the Greek word ace means for, in order, or in two. Matthew 26, 28 says, this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the remission of, or for the forgiveness of sins. Ace indicates the direction or relation of the action to its goal or outcome. Ace does not mean because, but is always forward looking as indicated uh, by the terms two and two, four, and so that in no reputable English version does the retrospective because ever translate Greek ace. Ace may be rendered to simply two, four, or depending on the context, the case pronoun, blah, blah, blah. Um, but in Matthew 26, 28, ace means four into order, indicating that Jesus' blood is poured out for the purpose of or without the result uh, or with the result of the forgiveness of sins for many. It does not mean because of indicating that Jesus' blood is poured out because of the forgiveness of sins that has already been granted uh, for grace. And so again, it does not mean that part of it. Again, it says they said that would make no sense in the context of Jesus' sacrifice and the institution of the Lord's Supper. So no problem, no problem seeing the grammar, exact same grammar in this passage, no contentions about it because it doesn't go against their theology. Okay, now let's move back over to Bing. Again, I asked Matthew, I asked uh, Bing, not Bing, Bard, getting all this confused. Explain the Greek grammar of Matthew 26, 28. It says, sure. And so it breaks these down. Again, I like how it does that. Breaks these words down. Tells you the grammar. You can see that on your screen. Tells you what they mean. Then down here it says, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for the forgiveness of your sins. The Greek grammar in Matthew 26, 28 is relatively simple. Uh, and it talks about the main verb. It's uh, indicative verb, meaning is. The verb is the present tense, which indicates the action is happening now. Uh, the noun means blood, and in the accusative case, because it is the direct object of the verb. The, the noun means covenant, and is a genitive case because it's being possessed by the adjective. And it goes on down here, and it says blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah, here we go. The preposition ace means for, and is followed by the noun, uh, the, the pronoun, uh, means your and is in the genitive case because it is being possessed by the noun uh, armantinon or however you say that anyway the overall meaning of the verse is that jesus is saying that the blood is being poured out for the forgiveness of the sins of his followers and so this is key passage in the christian faith as it shows jesus death was sacrificed for the sins of humanity all right now let's go over to can't remember if I did chat GTP on this one. Maybe I did. Uh, let's see. Did I ask the question? Yeah, explain the Greek grammar in Matthew 26, 28. All right, let's see what it says. And we'll try to skip some of this. I know this is getting redundant, but I just wanted to show you um, multiple different things showing you that um, it shows the same exact thing on this verse, which is the same grammar as Acts 2.38 in that section. And it says right here, um, in this verse, the key grammatic element is to focus on is the preposition ace. The preposition ace is used in the phrase, um, you see the Greek word there, I'm not phrase, I'm not going to try to pronounce it, which is translated as for the forgiveness of sins. The preposition ace indicates direction or purpose. It can be translated as four and two, two and two, depending on the context. 
It carries the meaning of for the purpose of, for the sake of, signifies the pouring out of Jesus' blood is done with the purpose of bringing about the forgiveness of sins. Therefore, the grammar of Matthew 26, 28 emphasizes that Jesus' blood is poured out with the specific purpose of achieving forgiveness for many. Again, the preposition ace highlights the intended results of the go. Um, and so it says it's important to note that the interpretation of this verse extends beyond the grammar alone. The theological significance of Jesus' blood and its role is the forgiveness of sins is key aspect to consider when examining Matthew 26, 28 in its broader context. And so it makes it clear. Same thing. Saying there's no conflict here. Now, even though it's the same grammar, nobody's trying to say anything different. And then the last one I want to look at is it's the, the one I told you that I paid for, which is Quick Write AI. I don't know what kind of deals they have going on. I don't, I'm not affiliated with them or anything. Been using it for about a month. And like I said, I really like um, how it works. Um, you can just get away with the free ones. You don't have to buy this. It'd be kind of expensive now. I think it's, I don't even know what the price is. They have it on sale at different times. And then you don't, like I said, you don't know whether it's going to remain. But here's what it says on this. Again, it did the same thing. Here's the explanation of the Greek grammar using this verse. And I could have asked additional questions about this, by the way. But as you can see, is it just kind of basically just gave me just the information of what these things mean, these verses mean. Uh, let's see, let's get down here to Ace. It says, this is a prepositional phrase meaning for the forgiveness of sins. It explains the purpose or result of the blood being poured out, which is the forgiveness of sins. And so it didn't give quite as much information as maybe as some of the other ones, but um, it works really well on a bunch of other different things. So if you're looking for one, maybe that you want to pay for, I mean, I'm not, don't get it because I recommended it. Uh, look, explore it, look up information on yourself. It's relatively unknown. I just got lucky to find it. And um, I'd hope, like I said, I hope they continue to be able to uh, keep going with this software because it's going, they're going to be adding more features and I'll get to have it for a lifetime for however long that lasts, the lifetime of the software. And so anyway, I've showed you all these things. Again, you can see how you can use these AI tools to get further into the Greek. But like I've said, you have to be careful because it's going to pull things like I know from Acts 238. It's going to pull those things and let you know that there may be a couple of other views on that. But as we've clearly shown, there is absolutely no room in the grammar whatsoever, even though that I might initially look that way, there's no room for it to mean because of. It means exactly what it says that we are to be, that we are, they were to repent and be baptized for the remission or the forgiveness of sin. And then, you know, to be able to see the gift of the Holy Spirit. So a very, very, very clear passage and shows very clearly that once again, we've been teaching all along that baptism is for the forgiveness of sin is absolutely necessary. So I hope you find this helpful. Hope you can use these tools to dig deeper into God's word. And remember, just always test everything against scripture and continue thinking anything that'll get you your mind uh, thinking about God's word and digging it deeper. I think it's a good thing. And so I hope you have, uh, have a great evening.